Hi everybody, welcome to my November favorites video. Thank you for joining me. So if you haven't been following my journey on Instagram, I'll link my Instagram handle below. I have been in Europe for the past almost four months and I just got back to Whistler, my hometown in Whistler, less than a month ago. So I wanted to share with you all the you know, books and journals and decks, crystals, etc., that I have been using since I got back and what has helped me feel grounded, reconnected to my home, because that's what I really needed after four months of being on the go and eight countries in less than four months and a lot of movement, a lot of change, a lot of transition. So I really needed to feel grounded, especially as we enter the winter season, which is that time of going inward, inner reflection, um, I wanted to share with you my favorites for November. So let's get uh, straight into them. So the book that I've been reading for since I got back, so I think it arrived probably a couple months ago, but I got back about around the middle of November. So I started reading this a few weeks ago and um, she is one of my favorite artists of all time. I've been following her journey since I was 20 years old, I think, around 2021, and I think we're around the same age. And uh, since then, her career has really blown up. Alicia Keys. So she came out with um, an autobiography this year entitled More Myself. And um, I'm not finished this book yet. I've just, um, just started reading it. It has a really nice feel to it. I think it's really beautifully done. I love the photo of her on the front. She just has this like carefree sense of uh, this is me, this is who I am, and um, I don't need to prove myself to anybody anymore. And I feel like this book is, uh, so far what I've read, it's um, it's um, very relatable. She um, shares a lot of stories from her youth and challenges with her family and her relationships and sort of her building blocks um, to success and um, her own personal experiences and challenges. So um, yes, Alicia Keys, More Myself, has been on my reading list this month. Also, she had a new album that came out a few months ago as well and it's self-titled Alicia. It's my favorite album of hers so far, I think. Like. I mean, I've been following her for years and years and years, like I said, and uh, it's just, I feel like I've been following her journey. I feel like my journey is very much in alignment with hers, and um, we seem to be in a similar places throughout our 20s and 30s, and uh, for me, this has been a year of really uh, stepping fully into myself and releasing all that I don't need in order to do that, and I feel like this book is... Um, is very relatable. So yes, so Alicia Keys, more myself. It's like less than 300 pages, it's a really easy read. Um, if you've ever been connected to her art um, or anything she's done, she's, an, ad she's a, an activist in many ways. If you're connected to her or what she has to say, I would recommend reading this book. I'm enjoying it so far. And checking out her album which is self-titled uh, Alicia. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful album. Okay, so that's all in terms of books because I've only been back for a few weeks and I'm just taking my time with this one. Um, we'll get to the decks a little bit later. Something that's really helped me um, feel grounded and um, soothed and I mean, I, I always drink a lot of tea and maybe you do too. I'd love to hear in the comments below what your favorite teas are. Uh, but this one is so random. I found it at, it's a President's Choice brand. So if you're not in Canada, I don't know if you can get pres President's Choice in the US or in Europe, but um, the blend I'm sure is a very uh, easy blend to find, which I had never tried until recently. It's called Feeling Soothed and it's peppermint, ginger, and fennel. Oh, it's like the most amazing combination. I just, um, sometimes I find ginger tea a little bit too strong and agitating to my system. 
uh, whereas the peppermint adds a little bit of a cooling factor and so does the uh, the fennel. I feel like the fennel is so great for your for digestion and just feeling relaxed. And uh, so yeah, this has been uh, a favorite for the month of November for me, feeling soothed. In terms of uh, personal care products, so like I said, I was in Europe for almost four months and I ran out of my Canadian products so I had to experiment with some new brands when I was over there in terms of personal care. And I'm gonna share this with you just because I absolutely love it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get it, I'm sorry, in uh, Canada, Canada or the US, but it's this Swiss brand called uh, Zoe Ultra Sensitive. And it's just a daily face cream. I use it day and night. It's in German, so you won't be able to read that unless you read German, but it says it's made in Switzerland. This just, it is so hydrating, but at the same time, it's really firming. So it feels like it gives my face almost like a little bit of a lift when I use it. So, I mean, if you're in Europe and you can get your hands on this and you're looking for a new uh, night cream or day cream, this has been, this has been wonderful. And I just want to say um, as well that I've paid for all these products myself. I'm not sponsored by anyone. These are just my personal favorites. So I wanted to share this one because this you can buy in Canada and it's um, another face cream that I love. I just feel it goes on so smoothly, smoothly. and it's made by a, a company called Pacifica and it's called Dreamy Youth. You can see that. And it is just, it goes on so silky smooth. It's so nourishing and hydrating. It says it's for all skin types. It's, um, it says deeply moisturizes, promotes a lifting effect. So I guess I like that deep moisture with lift because both these creams have that effect on my skin. So yeah, Pacifica, this has been, this is like a dream to put on at night before you go to bed as part of a really, um, beautiful self-care routine. I just like spray some lavender mist on your face and then this cream, yeah, it's heavenly. Okay, so I wanted to share that. And if you have any skincare products that you love, please feel free to share them with me down in the comment section below. I'm always inter interested in trying new things. Okay, so let's move into some more um, healing, self-care, grounding um, items that I used in the month of November. Okay, so first of all, like I said, when I got back from traveling, I needed to feel grounded. I needed to feel rooted in my, in my body, in my home, in my hometown. And um, so I was working with this beautiful piece of hematite and maybe you've worked with hematite before. This is a quite large piece. I love it because I can sit with it in meditation, especially if I'm feeling anxious or, you know, just like in my head, like very heady. This is a really great crystal for bringing you back down to earth and helping you feel rooted and connected. So, um, yes, hematite. This has been my savior. I love it. I love having it by my bedside table as well. The, um, the second crystal that I used, that I always use, but I wanted to share is um, this amethyst crystal. And amethyst is, I mean, it has many, many properties and benefits, but I use it for protection. So I feel like because I'm in this sort of more fragile space, or I was when I um, landed back into Canada, I needed to protect my energy. I needed to feel like, okay, I need to focus on myself, focus on grounding and reconnecting. And I, I you know, I can't be exposed to all these um, draining energies. So what I, I use this for, uh, well, I use it actually at my bedside table. So at night before I go to bed, I find that I feel watched over by my guides, my angels, when I have this beautiful crystal at my bedside table, it's just a, an energetic reminder that I'm protected. 
Um, but I also use it in sacred ritual. I use it on my altar. Sometimes I carry it in my purse if I'm going into a situation where I might feel like I'm gonna be energetically drained. That's the amethyst, the protective stone. So I'll show you again what it looks like. All right. And those are my two crystals for the month of November. What next, what next? Oh yes, okay. So I have been doing a 30 day meditation sacred ritual called Walking with Mary. And I'll link uh, the website, if I remember, in the comment section below, or rather in the description below. And essentially what it is, it's 30 days of connecting with the Blessed Mother in her many forms. And so not Mary in a religious sense, not connected to Catholicism, but Mary in terms of the Divine Mother and her many forms. And um, so far we've been working on um, the element of water, element of fire. And this was sort of more into December, but I wanted to share this because I was using this in November as well. Um, there's been a lot of meditation, mantra associated with this 30-day uh, walking with Mary devotion that I've been partaking in. And so I, um, when I was in Florence in November, or at the end of October, but I was using this in November, I bought this, um, this beautiful rosary. And so it looks like it would be like really heavy but it's super light. I'm actually not sure what it's made of. I asked the man at the store, but I can't remember now what it's made of, but this is a wooden cross. And it's just, it just feels like I'm a tactile person. And when I'm reciting mantra or prayer, I just, I love the feel of these beads uh, between my fingers. And I wanna say as well that I don't use a rosary in a traditional sense. Um, maybe sometimes I do, I'll recite Hail Marys in my own way, um, with my own words, but I, I more use it to connect to the energy of the Divine Mother, like I said, in her many forms and with these different prayers and meditations that we've been doing, as well as my own prayer meditation and sacred ritual practices. So, um, yeah, this has been like such a beautiful addition to my altar. And like I said, it's it's nice and light. And for me, it's like all about the feeling. And it just, it just feels like this was made for me and my hands and, and uh, for the rituals that I do. So yes, this is a very, um, definitely a favorite for the month of November. Okay. It's really nice going through all these items with you because I feel so connected to them and it's nice to every time I pick them up or feel them, it reminds me of my connection to what I've been sharing with you. Okay. So we'll get to Dex in just a moment. Oh yes, this is relatively new to my um, journal collection. I have purchased a new journal and for me it's the same thing. It's all about the feeling. And so if I'm drawn to something, I um, it has to be like the colors, the art, the, the feel of the paper. Uh, and, and for me this journal, this journal really does that. It's the Nature Whispers um, Writing and Creativity Journal. Isn't that a gorgeous cover? So beautiful. And it's, uh, it's by Angela Hartfield, and the artwork is by Josephine Wall. And it's just, it's one of those journals that it's just, it has, it has photographs within the journal and quotes. You can see that there, like, look at this gorgeous artwork. So it has that very enchanted forest feel and I'm very connected to that energy, the energy of the trees, the energy of the fae, the magical forest. That's so pretty. And there's some quotes in here. Oh, this is like in the middle of the book. And I got this at um, 
at the Oracle at my local metaphysical store. So if you have local meta metaphysical stores in your neighborhood, this is the time to check out what journals they have in because they usually get in a lot of journals for, for Christmas. I'll show you one more. Look at that, so gorgeous. So for me, like seeing this type of artwork really inspires my creativity. So if I'm writing poetry, if I'm creating something for a project that I'm working on for my business, um, this to me is just pure inspiration. And I'll just, I'll read to you one of the quotes. Let's just flip to a random page. Okay. Nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. Loves you. So yes, oh, this is uh, my favorite new journal, Nature's Whispers. Okay. I think we're going to move on to the decks now. I actually did use quite a few decks in the month of November um, because like I said, I was, I was in Europe and then I came back to Canada. So different places, different needs. Um, and plus I got a couple of new decks in the mail when I was away. So I was excited to uh, dive into them when I got back. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one. So at the beginning of November, when I was in Switzerland, I was called to work with this deck almost daily for daily card draws. And um, this is a deck that I actually purchased when I was in Paris in August. I actually bought it on my birthday on August 16th. And I went to this metaphysical store and I had the intention of buying a few other decks I wanted to get the Visconti tarot and a few other sort of European type decks that are more traditional tarot decks. And then I saw the woman who was who owned the shop and she was behind the counter and she only spoke French. She had somebody else helping her that spoke English, so I could only I couldn't really communicate with her. And she was laying these spreads with this deck and I just saw it and I was like, I have to have that deck. Like who is the creator? Everything about it speaks to me. And um, so I went in with the intention of getting one deck and came out with another. And this is the deck. It's, um, it's the Persian Tarot by Madame Indira. And I apologize. I don't know if this deck is available in Canada and the US. You might be able to get it online. But like I said, I bought it when I was in France, in Paris, in a metaphysical store. So this tarot deck is not a traditional tarot deck. I actually don't know if it follows a system. If you are familiar with the system that it follows, let me know in the comment section below. But um, this deck is, look at it, it's so gorgeous. It's a 55 card deck. So tarot normally has 78. But look at these images. Oh, I just love. Okay, the peacock and immediately I connected with this deck it comes with a really small little white book um, and I did have a look at this that book initially when I got this deck but um, now I just uh, I read it intuitively look at the backs the backs are gorgeous as well but it just has just like bright vibrant colors and um, simple images, like I don't like complicated imagery. I find it distracting, um, but uh, I get some really uh, clear messages with this deck, but I don't find it confronting. I find it pretty gentle. It has like a gentler energy. So yeah, this I was working with, actually working with quite a bit, August, September, September October, and the beginning of November, but Interestingly, since I got back, I haven't really been working with it, but I wanted to share with you because I definitely used this when I was in Switzerland at the beginning of November. Okay. So Persian Tarot by Madame Indira. Okay, so what's another deck that I have been working with? Okay, so <clears throat> another deck that well, a deck that came to me when I was away and I ordered it when I was in Switzerland and uh, I saw somebody do a review of this deck 
I saw a couple people do a review on Tarot Tube and I was like, I have to have this deck. Like everything about it spoke to me. And um, if you don't know, I work with angelic energy and that's actually how I started my journey, working with angel cards, oracle cards, connecting with the angelic realm. And so when I saw this woman who I actually hadn't come across before on YouTube, she did a review of this tarot deck and um, it's a, basically a tarot deck that helps you connect to the angelic realm. And it's called the influence of the angels tarot. I believe this is US Games. Um, it says it's by Jody Bojinski, Barbesi, and Karen Bojinski. I really hope I didn't um, mispronounce their names. Yeah, it's US Games. And it does come with this um, with this great little book. If you're looking, if you're new to tarot and you want to connect with uh, the, um, the angelic realm and uh, the messages from the angels, because each deck or rather each card has an angel in it. And each um, card has a really, really thorough description as well as an angelic message at the bottom there. So I really like that. But um, initially when I started working with this deck, and I'll show you the deck, <laughs> I, was, I was working with it using the guidebook and now I'm just working with it intuitively. So these are the backs, such gorgeous backs. And also it has this like stunning gold gilding. But um, here I'll show you a couple of the cards. Uh, for me now, I've lately just been working with this deck. Oh, such a gorgeous. I love the borders. I know some people have cut off the borders, but personally, I really, I really like it. Look at that King of Wands. Yeah, so for me, I get really clear messages from this deck. Um, but again, it's, it is a bit gentler. It's not confronting. It's not scary. It's not, um... Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's like gentle nudges. So yeah, I've been working with this one quite a bit, almost daily. And for me, because I already have a strong connection to the angels and what they represent, what their energies are on an individual basis, I like that there's some of the main archangels in these cards because it um, it it sort of provides like a story for the card through an angelic lens, which I really like. So yeah, this is the Influence of the Angels Tarot. Influence of the Angels Tarot. Okay, what other decks have I been working with? Okay, okay, well, oh yes, okay. So, this is my soul oracle deck. It's a mega deck, which is Kyle Gray's Keepers of the Light Oracle and his Angel Prayers Archangels, just the Archangels from the Angel Prayers deck together. So you can see it's two different decks combined. And this one for me, it's just like a comfort deck. Like I get really clear messages I have a really strong relationship with these cards. I feel like they speak to me. I feel like they know me. And um, I usually just do one card draws with this deck or maybe um, strength heart challenge, like a three card draw. But as you can see, there's uh, ascended masters, there's archangels, um, Mary Magdalene. There's some beautiful, beautiful um, energies in this deck. So yeah, this is my, this is sort of like if you wanted to call it my ride or die, like it's what I started with. I always come back to it. There's Archangel Michael. And um, it just feels like home. So coming, wanting to come back home into that groundedness. This was a deck that uh, I found very helpful in the month of November. Okay. And again, that was the Keepers of the Light Oracle combined with the Archangels from Angel.
Prayers, both by Kyle Gray. He's one of my main teachers. He's incredible. I have learned so much from him. I'm part of his online angel team program and um, I've seen him live in New York and if you haven't checked out his work and you're interested in connecting with your guardian angel, he's a wonderful teacher. Check him out, kylegray.co.uk, I think is his website, and he's also on Instagram. Okay, now, moving into a different energy um, outside the angelic realm, another deck that I felt really called to work with when I got back, uh, especially reconnecting with the forest when I could, when my quarantine was over and I could go outside and I could you know, get into the trees and connect with nature again. Uh, the Fae was calling me. So connecting with the Fae and the Fae energy. So I, um, I hadn't used it for a while, but I pulled out my Fairies Oracle by Brian Froud. And uh, this deck is incredible. And I'm, you know, I'm not gonna say it's just the deck. The deck is a tool that helps me to connect with the Fae. And um, I've always felt deeply connected to the Fae ever since I was a little girl. Um, that energy has always resonated with me, the magical forest, the enchanted forest, the Fae. And um, I'm just gonna show you the deck here and some of the cards. But um, I, f I find with this deck, I usually use the guidebook because the guidebook is amazing. This is the guidebook that it comes with. It's like a hard cover. And um, it's like, as you can see, I like have so much highlighted in it. It's just like it has full descriptions of the cards. And this deck for me is definitely more confronting. It shows you the stuff that you don't want to look at or you might not want to look at. It's, um, it gives you a stronger nudge. Like it gives me a stronger nudge. I'm just going to speak from my own personal experience. I feel like this deck tells it like it is. It's a straight shooter. It's like a no bullshit approach. Like this is what you need to know and this is why. And that's, uh, that's what I needed a little bit of uh, toward the end of November. I, I pulled this deck out once I had sort of settled back in a little bit more. Uh, the Fae was calling and uh, so I, I immediately was drawn to this deck. And it's interesting because I have the Tarot of the Hidden Realm, which is also a deck that connects with very deeply with Fae energy. But I just, this one was the one that was calling more than that one. I haven't pulled out Tarot of the Hidden Realm. So, um, yeah, this one is, uh, you get these like really potent messages and you can tell from the artwork, it's just like, it's really powerful. And you can read this deck intuitively. I mean, I have read it intuitively and I still get those really um, confronting messages. But I also know, I feel like the Fae is very supportive. In my, in my experience with the Fae, I feel like the deck is confronting, but I feel like the Fae tells me what I need to know. Isn't that a gorgeous card? Wow. There's no BS with this deck, that's for sure. And so when I was feeling in more of a fragile place when I first got back, I wasn't gonna pull this deck out. When I felt in a more rooted place, that was when it uh, came out for me. I'll show you a few more. So again, this is the Fairies Oracle by um, Brian Froud and the, the uh, book, the Fantastic Guy book is uh, by Jessica McBeth. So that's all I'm going to show you of that one. But I, I feel like this deck is going to be one that I that I often return to because for me the experience is very potent, very powerful. Yeah. All right, Fairy's Oracle. Okay, and we're getting to the last deck. So, um, well, first of all, um, I've put it into this beautiful. Casing. Look at how gorgeous this is. It's like, I actually bought this at um, the Whistler Oracle as well. I believe these are made in Vietnam. Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? I don't think it's intended to be a deck bag, but I've made it into a deck bag. 
And um, this is a deck that I have come back to after being away from it for almost four months, but wanting to reconnect with it. I didn't bring it with me. I didn't think I was gonna be away for that long. I thought I was gonna be away for three or four weeks. And then it turned into almost four months. Um, but uh, this I'm realizing more and more is my, my deck. It's a deck that I connect deeply to. It's a deck that I get really crystal clear messages from. It's a deck where there's so much depth in the imagery. There's history. There's so much rooted in what this deck is. And that is the Rider Waite Smith. And this is the, um, the Universal Weight Edition with the, um, the Starbacks. And um, I actually haven't done anything to modify this deck. I'll shoot, show you a few of the images. But for me, this deck, it's sort of similar to, the, uh, to my angel cards. This deck to me just feels like home. It feels like reflective, like this deck knows me. And um, I, I've been doing one card draws with this deck. And it's like, everything is just like boom, boom, boom. Like it's exactly what I need to know. When I ask specific questions or when I ask just for general, what do I need to know today? Thank you for revealing to me what I need to know. I get these like just really clear intuitive messages with this deck. And I really like the color palette on this um, universal weight. It's much brighter than the traditional Rider Waite Smith. So for me, that works really well. Yeah. So it's the universal weight. And I just have a feeling that I'm gonna keep coming back to this deck. I'd like to explore different um, Rider Waite decks. I'm kind of keen on the Centennial version, trying out the Centennial version or maybe the borderless edition. All right, we'll leave it with the star card. All right, so these are all my favorites for November. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, I would love to hear about what your favorites for November are or were. Um, the decks you use, books, journals, um, self-care products. Yeah, please let me know in the comment section down below. And again, thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to follow my journey, I post more regularly on Instagram. It's at Jillian Marie Pierce. Um, I will post it in the description down below. And um, I'm newer to the tarot side of YouTube. So if you have a tarot channel, please um, let me know in the comment section down below, or even if you're interested in tarot, if you wanna connect through this uh, tarot tube community, I really, um, I'm excited to be part of it and to join it and to be, you know, just m connecting with more people who are doing this work and who are interested in, um, in uh, working with energy. And uh, so yeah, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you and, uh, or connect with me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching this all the way through. I hope you are doing really well and sending you lots of love. Um, if you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button and share it with a friend. And uh, I will see you all in the next one soon. Lots of love, bye.